Hello, I'm Irvine Mayor Christina Shea. With me today is Michael Connell, President and CEO of the Irvine Ranch Conservancy, and also Dr. Martin Fee, Senior Vice President and Chief Clinical Officer at Hogue Hospital. The topic of reopening is in front of our minds for everyone right now, including our Irvine City Council. We are making plans and setting things in motion in line with guidance from the state of California. We know that residents are anxious for city facilities such as tennis courts, pools, and playgrounds to reopen, and we will be discussing how and when to safely reopen these amenities at the Irvine City Council meeting on May 12th. In the meantime, I'd like to update you on how the city is progressing into the first part of phase two, as well as our plans for the summer. On the business front, the City Council and I are in constant contact with the Greater Irvine Chamber and Irvine Company regarding the safe reopening of Irvine businesses. Many retailers are able to increase pickup and delivery options while encouraging social distancing during these transactions. The continued use of face coverings for business and personnel and patrons is also required. And implementing devices such as hand-free card readers are still recommended. Guidance has also been issued for manufacturers and warehouses. As we begin this transition to a new normal, we strongly encourage our residents to continue to patronize Irvine restaurants and our retailers. And when you shop and dine in Irvine, a portion of your money you spend goes to support vital city services, which includes our public safety, our park maintenance, and our street services. I know that many of you have medical questions regarding COVID-19 and the gradual reopening of our city. We want to help address your concerns by providing answers from medical professionals. And to that end, we have scheduled a virtual town hall for this coming Thursday, May 14th from 3 to 4 p.m. We have experts from Hogue, UCI Health, Kaiser Permanente, and the Orange County Healthcare Agency will be joining Council Member Farrah Khan and myself for this wonderful town hall. So to sign up, please visit our city website. Residents are encouraged to submit questions in advance. The town hall will also be aired on the city's ICTV channels, and I truly hope you will join us for what I envision to be a productive afternoon. Lastly, I want to share with you some exciting plans for the summer. While we have had to modify our signature summer events, I am pleased to announce that we will be holding our sizzling summer concerts and movies on the lawn. Although these traditions will look different than they did in the years past, sizzling summer concerts are tentatively set to begin July 12th at the Orange County Great Park Festival parking lot. The five concert series of family-friendly shows will be presented in a drive-in format. Attendees can park their cars and enjoy a picnic from home or purchase food from a gourmet food truck. Social distancing protocols will be in place, ensuring a worry-free evening of fun. And who doesn't love a drive-in movie? We'll also offer our popular Great Lawn movies on the lawn in a drive-in format. Residents can enjoy a night under the stars and enjoy family blockbuster films beginning August 1st. So for complete details, please visit the City of Irvine website. This measured re-emergent into social events and business activities dependent on our continued compliance with the city, the county, and the state guidelines. So I urge you to continue to wear your cloth mask when you go out in the public and to practice social distancing by remaining at least six feet apart from others. Now let me turn to Michael O'Connell. Michael? Thank you, Mayor Shea. It's great to be with you today. Anyone who lives in Irvine knows how important open space and parks are to our quality of life. Irvine residents are incredibly fortunate to have access to so much open space and to live in a city that puts high value on it. In fact, Irvine ranked seventh among all cities in the country in park resources for residents in a recent study by the Trust for Public Land. But Irvine's parks go well beyond ball fields and community green space. The city includes more than 6,600 acres of natural wilderness open space in its boundaries. These lands are truly special so special, in fact, that they have been declared part of both a national and a state natural landmark by the National Park Service and by California State Parks. Irvine has strongly committed to taking care of these lands and the many rare and endangered plants and animals that live there so they can be enjoyed today and for many future generations. That's where my organization, the Irvine Ranch Conservancy, comes in. 
We are a nonprofit organization based in Irvine that takes care of urban wilderness in partnership with public landowners and creates opportunities for the public to enjoy it and participate in its stewardship. We've partnered with the city to manage the open space preserve since 2005, and together we have built a network of more than 25 miles of trails, created an active community of more than 500 volunteers, conducted recreational and educational programs for tens of thousands of residents, and managed and restored natural habitats throughout the city. While many communities have closed their trails during this crisis, Irvine and the Conservancy have been able to keep the city's trails open through careful management of access and physical distancing. This has allowed residents to get outside and get fresh air and enjoy nature as a welcome relief from the stay-at-home order safely. One thing this crisis has made clear is how essential and critical open space is to people's basic lives and our well-being. Hopefully soon, we can begin to resume recreational and educational programs and volunteer opportunities in the open space too, again with very careful management of health and safety. Irvine Ranch Conservancy looks forward to that day, as well as continuing our tremendous partnership with the city of Irvine. Keep an eye on the website, letsgooutside.org, for more information. Thank you. Now let me turn it over to Dr. Martin Fee, Senior Vice President and Chief Clinical Officer at Hogue Hospital. All right, thank you. Um, my name's Dr. Martin Fee. I'm a Chief Clinical Officer um, with Hogue Hospital, um, uh, both with our campus here in Irvine and also in Newport Beach, and it's my uh, honor uh, to speak to you today. I'm very grateful uh, for the invite from uh, Mayor Shea and, and the opportunity to give the citizens of Irvine a little update on what uh, the whole COVID epidemic and what we're doing specifically um, at, at Hogue Hospital. So Hogue, as you know, uh, treated one of the first uh, COVID patients here in the state of California, right here in Irvine at our campus. Uh, this is back in January and uh, the patient did very well. Since that time, uh, Hogue has gained a lot of experience, our whole community has, in how to stay safe and how to treat COVID patients. Thankfully, we've got a lot of capacity, um, still only 3% of uh, Hogue's um, hospital beds are currently taken up by COVID patients, and uh, only 1% um, are, are in the ICU, and only 1% of our ventilators are are, are being utilized, so we have a lot of capacity. Um, there's also a lot of questions, and I think a lot of confusion around the whole matter of testing. Um, I can tell you that there are two types of tests. Um, the uh, tests that actually tests um, or detects COVID itself at Hogue, we've done over 5,000 of those tests. Uh, percent of positive rate on that has been around 6%. So again, most people that are tested for COVID test negative. The more testing we have, the better we understand the prevalence and, and how best to protect the community. Um, so the antibody tests, which actually show whether or not you may have been exposed, are in development. Um, there's a lot of questions around that because um, you've probably heard that these were many of these tests were rushed before the FDA could do a full analysis. So there's a lot of testing out there. Um, some of which is of potentially marginal value. And um, I want to assure you all that that's work that is very ongoing to come up with a meaningful, an meaningful antibody test because I think that's critical to really understanding how many of the community um, has been exposed and may be immune. We're not quite there yet. It's a work in progress. Um, I'm happy to report that, you know, Hogue is working very closely with the Orange County Health Agency to develop uh, these tests. There's a couple out there that look very promising, uh, much more accurate, and those are all being studied. So I think um, more to come there, but I, I know once we've got uh, that degree of testing, that will that'll allow us to have a much better idea of who's immune, who's not, um, which will ultimately get us to the the, um, the goal of reopening uh, society. Uh, one thing that's important to um, remember too is that even though COVID's here, um, you know, other health issues don't go away. And there's been situations where people have been so fearful of COVID that they haven't you know, gone to the emergency department because they've got chest pain and things like that. Another message to the community is don't neglect your health care. I think you know, the unfortunate truth is COVID isn't going away anytime soon, so we can't put off forever our own health care needs and such. And I, and I want to ensure that, um, assure the community that, um, you know, Hogue um, and, you know, the other health care providers have, 
have done uh, everything we can to make it safe. So if you need to go see your physician, it's absolutely allowed to do that. But I know, you know, we're all probably having, I know I am a little, a little mental health issues with being locked up for all this time and such like that. So um, I, I think it's really important to not neglect your health out of fear of COVID to know that it is safe to go out. We've got um, everything in place we need to keep you safe to go see the physician. And if for some reason you don't, or you have a condition that doesn't require an in-person visit that we have all the um, uh, telemedicine um, uh, options available as well. And if you do have questions, don't feel afraid to reach out to your physicians, um, to your healthcare providers, because we're here to help you um, uh, stay healthy during this crisis. You know, in summary, I'd just like to, again, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, give you a little update. Like I said, uh, I think the unfortunate truth that um, it's not going away anytime soon. That being said, I think we're learning to live with it smarter and hopefully kind of uh, come to the right balance of, of beginning to live our lives again, but staying safe and um, you know, not uh, letting COVID get the best of us. I know that we'll emerge from this uh, together uh, stronger um, and uh, in a better place. So thank you for, for the opportunity. Thank you. I want to thank Dr. Fee for coming today. Thank you so very much. I would also like to thank Michael O'Connell for joining us here today as well. In closing, there is still work to be done, but we are on the right path. Thank you for your collective efforts to keep our city and our county safe. I look forward to hearing from you as part of our virtual town hall on Thursday at 3 p.m. But until then, stay well and be safe. I'm Mayor Christina Shea, and thank you so very much for watching.